Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today is Grade 6, Unit 1, Lesson 18, Practice Problems Review is on surface area of a cube. In question 1, what is the volume of a cube with an edge length of 8 inches? Well, volume is equal to that edge length to the third power, which means 8 times 8 times 8, which is 512 cubic inches inches. What is the volume of a cube with edge length one-third centimeter? Well, volume is still equal to the edge length to the third power, so we're really looking at one-third to the third power, which is simply one-third times one-third times one-third, which is one-twenty-seventh cubic centimeters. And then a cube has a volume of eight feet. What is its edge length? So we're going backwards now. In other words, if volume is equal to 8, what number times itself times itself is going to get us back to 8? Well, how about 2? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And so the edge length is going to be 2 feet. Question number 2. What three-dimensional figure can be assembled from this net? Well, Looks like a cube to me. All equal squares, and there's six of them, so that's a cube. If each square has a side length of 61 centimeters, write an expression for the surface area and another for the volume of the figure. Well, 61 squared gets me the area of each of these little squares, right? And so we could say, since there's six of them, surface area is equal to six times that edge length squared. In other words, six times 61, that's a six, 61 squared, square centimeters is the perfect expression here for the surface area. And you could just write 6 times 61 squared square centimeters. Now, I wouldn't fault you if you uh, continued going here. Um, again, we're looking for 6 times 61 squared square centimeters. But if you did simplify this, you would end up with 6 times 3,721, which is 22,300. 26 square centimeters, but again, we're looking for the 6 times 61 squared square centimeters for our answer. Now, volume is equal to that edge length to the third power. In other words, 61 to the third centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters. All right, question three. Draw a net for a cube with edge length x centimeters. Well, one thing I like doing, knowing that there's going to be six sides here, is I start off with a bit of a rectangle here. And I try to divide these as equally as I can. And not the perfect shape, but again, it's still going to be our six squares here. At edge length of x centimeters, well, x, x, every one of these is x, all right? So, what is the surface area of this cube? Well, again, there's six squares here. The area of one of these squared is x squared, and so there's going to be two, three, four, five, six of these squares that have an area of x squared. So this is going to be the surface area, six times x squared square centimeters. The volume? Well, volume is still equal to the side length to the third power. And so we could just simply write 
x to the third cubic centimeters, or the equivalent of that. Continuing on now to problem four. Here is a rectangular prism that was not drawn accurately. A, explain what is wrong with this net. B, draw a net that can be assembled into a rectangular prism. Well, the problem here is if you folded this, the two small squares are not the right size to close the three-dimensional figure. I mean, this here and this here, they're not going to close the figure. They don't line up here. So squares will not close the figure. And then draw a net that can be assembled into a rectangular prism. Well, we start off with the square. Then I'll draw in a rectangle here. The key with this length coming up here is it has to match as closely as possible, as I'm freehanding this, this length. These two lengths need to be the same because that's what's going to fold up on each other. And then we come down here. This next square needs to match the first square on the left. The next rectangle needs to match the rectangle in the middle there. And then this one coming down needs to match the one up top. So in theory, you have matches here and here, here and there. And if I drew this right, the greens would also match. And then the side lengths also need to somewhat match here and there, here and here, and so on. Three, create another net for the same prism. Well, If I take a rectangle here, and this is going to be that green rectangle, and then a square, that's the blue square from the original. I'm going to call this my green rectangle, and then I'm going to have the red rectangle, the blue square, and what's left but the other red rectangle. All right, question six, or sorry, five. State whether each figure is a polyhedron and explain how you know. A, no. It is not a polyhedron. It's a curved surfaces, or has curved surfaces, hello. B, yes, this is a polyhedron. It's made of all polygons. And we'll just keep it as simple as that. And now our last question, question six. Here is Elena's work for finding the surface area of a rectangular prism that is one foot by one foot by two feet. She concluded that her surface area of the prism is 296 square feet. Do you agree with her and explain? Well, I'm going to say no right now and then we'll get into her work and explain why. We have inches up here. We have feet down here you need to be consistent in how you find the, um, the units when you're finding the surface area. So she used inches and feet in her calculation. We're mixed. So how can we make this better? Well, using my teacher red pen here, if we change these to one feet, instead of the 12 inches, that could really make all the difference in the world. And so where we see these 12s, we need to change these to 
ones. And so if we did that, this would be 2 times 1, which would just be 2. Now these seem to be good. And so if we take 8 plus the 2, we would get a combined area of 10 square feet. And that is it for this uh, last practice problems review of our first unit. Good luck.